Dr. Tom here. It's 2021. We've made the transition to the new CVT format, and it's time to update our mechanical PE exam strategies based on all we've learned. In part two, I'm going to outline the strategies that years of experience have shown to be the best approaches to preparing for the exam and for solving problems on exam day with the single goal of passing the exam. So let's get started. Passing the PE exam requires more than just taking a whack at it until you pass. It requires a serious commitment to the task of mastering the knowledge and skills required to pass. Before we dive into the details of what is required, I want to share the fundamental premise of all my exam strategies. That fundamental premise is that it is unlikely that you will be able to solve a problem during the exam that you do not recognize as one that you have recently seen and worked or as a problem very similar to it. I want to take a minute to talk about what that means because it impacts both how you prepare for the exam and how you take the exam. Quick problem identification during the exam is a key to success, and the only way to do that is to be familiar with the problems you are likely to see and with the solutions to those problems. Let's apply this premise to your exam preparation. Understanding the general engineering concepts associated with problems is the first step to building the familiarity you need to be successful. Then you need to become familiar with the right problems and their solutions. Once you have this knowledge, you need to work at being able to recognize and categorize a problem when you see it. Is it a belt friction problem? Is it a boiler problem? Is this a refrigerant problem? And last, you must develop a method to quickly locate the information you need to solve the problem, either in the reference handbook or from memory. It's not just about solving lots of practice problems. You need to have a sense of what type of problems you're solving and how the solutions can be applied to the problems you encounter on the exam. Now let's apply this premise to exam day. You're going to need your problem recognition skills to quickly determine which problems are familiar so that you can work familiar problems first. Then you can use your general knowledge and understanding of mechanical engineering concepts to determine how to solve less familiar problems. And last, you must develop a mindset that allows you to let unfamiliar problems go. There is no point to wasting precious exam time on problems you have little or no chance of solving. You don't need to solve all the problems on the exam to pass. With that fundamental premise in mind, let's take a closer look at some of the primary challenges presented by the computer-based testing or CBT format exam. I go into more detail about the many challenges of the CBT exam experience in my two YouTube videos on that topic, but here I'm going to focus on the two primary challenges you'll face. The first primary challenge of the CBT format is that your only reference will be the NCEES PE Mechanical Reference Handbook in PDF form on the screen. You will not be able to bring anything into the exam, no notes or references or textbooks. You will only have the equations provided in the reference handbook, so you need to find a way to make the reference handbook work for you. But the equations in the handbook are far from comprehensive. NCEES even includes a disclaimer stating that it does not contain all the information needed to answer every question on the exam. Where the reference handbook does not have the information you need, you will need to have that knowledge committed to memory. Time management is the other primary challenge of the CBT format, and that applies during both your exam preparation and the exam. Without a set exam date, keeping to a structured review schedule will be more difficult, but it is critical to do so. Human nature works against you here, but if you keep postponing your exam date, the hard-won knowledge and skills you've acquired will start to fade, and you will not go into the exam as prepared as you need to be. During the exam, a clock is counting down the minutes, and you are responsible for keeping track of the time and using your time wisely to get through all 80 problems on the exam. 
That's why it's important to have a solid time management plan going in and sticking with it. Without one, it's easy to get bogged down and run out of time. With those challenges in mind, you are going to need a plan to be successful. Two plans, actually. A plan for your exam preparation and a plan for exam day. Here are some strategies you should include in these two plans. Your exam preparation needs to include several key strategies. You need to make the necessary time commitment to cover all major exam topics. I talk more about the time needed to successfully prepare for the exam in my exam strategy part one video, which we have found is around 20 weeks. That is why we have based our PE exam review courses on a 20 week schedule. Our courses are self-paced, so we have participants who take more weeks or fewer weeks to complete their reviews, but the one thing that remains constant, you have to be committed to putting in the hours needed to get the points you need to pass. Take the time to make sure you understand the fundamentals of the mechanical engineering topics on your exam. Working problems without comprehending the context in which they exist will put you at a disadvantage when it comes to quickly identifying problems on the exam. In our courses, we teach general concepts in a logical, instructional order. This gives you a solid understanding of these concepts as a foundation on which you can build your familiarity with the problems. Understanding the concepts helps you categorize problems and see how they relate to one another. Of course, you need to work lots of the type of problems you are likely to see on the exam to become familiar with their solutions. One word of advice here, it is not necessary, or even possible, to be able to solve every problem you see on the exam. In fact, there will be some problems that require so much time to sort out that you should just skip them to focus on the low-hanging fruit. If you are familiar with enough high-probability problems, you will solve enough problems to pass. Learn to recognize typical problem types quickly. This is a skill that combines your understanding of fundamentals and your familiarity with typical problems and their solutions. It's something you should practice whenever you encounter a new problem. Ask yourself, what engineering concept is it about? Which set of equations should I use to solve it? You need to become familiar with the relevant sections of the NCEES PE Mechanical Reference Handbook. A tall order, I realize. It's over 500 pages, with between 300 and 400 pages applying to each of the mechanical exams. For better or worse, however, it's your only reference. So you need to know what's in it and develop a method to quickly find the equations you need to solve problems. Equally important, you need to know what's not in it. That way you can find what is in it quickly and not waste time looking for something that's not there. I'm going to talk more about what your exam day problem-solving strategy should be in a moment, but for it to be successful, you need to practice it throughout your preparation. Try to set up an environment that is as close as possible to taking the actual exam to practice your strategy. Minimize distractions, use a timer, and use the reference handbook as your only reference. These exam preparation strategies are the keys to passing the PE exam. That's why these strategies are at the core of DTC's mechanical PE exam reviews. Our courses are carefully designed to provide you with the structure, instruction, and practice you need to gain the knowledge and skills to implement each strategy. Now let's look at your exam day plan. Time management is crucial on exam day. The one thing you want to avoid is getting stuck, running out of time, and not getting to all the problems on the exam. With that in mind, I recommend that you go after low-hanging fruit first. By low-hanging fruit, I mean simple or very familiar problems that you can solve quickly and easily. You also want to make sure you take the time you need to solve these familiar problems. You can't rush through the solution. You need to keep a solid, steady pace when working problems that allows you to work them carefully and correctly. To make the best use of your time on exam day, you need to work problems in a strategic order. 
With that in mind, I recommend that you make multiple passes through the exam. On your first pass, if you look at a problem and you know how to work it, just do it right then. You want to get all the low-hanging fruit on your first pass. Take your time with the solution, get it done, and don't look back. Flag any other problems to come back to on your next pass. On your second pass, go back to the flag problems. Look for problems that are somewhat familiar, ones you think you might know how to work, and take the time to work those out. Don't panic when you see a problem you don't recognize at all. It's going to happen. Just skip the problems you don't recognize, but leave them flagged and put down a guess. I'll talk more about guessing in just a moment. On your last pass, you should be left with a few of these completely unfamiliar problems. In the time you have left, do some strategic searching in the reference handbook to see if you can come up with something to help you solve these problems. If you do, great. If you don't, you already put down a guess and at least have a chance of picking up an extra point or two. And just in case, always check to make sure that you have an answer for every problem before time runs out. There is no penalty for incorrect guesses. So guessing should definitely be a part of your exam day plan, but not as part of achieving the points needed to pass. You should treat successful guessing as a bonus or an offset for problems you should have gotten right but missed a step and got the wrong answer. Statistically, guessing should give 25% correct answers, but only if the A, B, C, Ds are equally distributed. They most likely are not. So choose a default guess and stick with it. Based on the NCEES practice exam answer distribution, the best default guess would be C. If you follow a plan, you will have an answer for every problem. If you stick to these four exam day strategies, you will have the best chance of maximizing your knowledge and skills to successfully solve the most problems on the exam. Your exam preparation plan and your exam day plan are the key strategies you need to pass the exam. But there are a couple of other seemingly simple steps you can take that will greatly enhance your chance for success. Units. If I wasn't Dr. Tom, I'd be Dr. Units. There are no trivial units errors. I cannot tell you how many times units are the reason someone gets the wrong answer to a problem. You have got to pay attention to them. It might be as simple as inches needed to be converted to feet or the other way around. Also, you will see both U.S. customary and SI metric units on the machine design and materials exam and on the thermal and fluid systems exam. But you will see only U.S. customary units on the HVAC and refrigeration exam. That being said, you typically do not have to worry about converting between systems, like converting meters to feet or the other way around. About the only time I have seen this required is when horsepower must be converted to kilowatts. So, before even thinking about picking up your calculator, make sure the final units are such that they match the units in the exam answers. With the CBT exam, you are allowed to bring an approved calculator into the exam and you will have an on-screen calculator that you can use as well. You must choose one of the approved calculators from the list on the NCEES website, and you should purchase two of them to use during your review and during the exam. Use the calculator you plan to use during the exam throughout your review so that you will be very familiar with how to use it by exam day. Also, alternate using your two calculators during your review to make sure they are both working properly. Bring both calculators to the exam with you, along with extra batteries. You can leave the spare in the locker, so you'll have it if you need it. You may want to consider solar power calculators to avoid needing to worry about batteries. You don't want something as mundane as a faulty calculator wrecking your exam day plan. As we wrap up this video, I'd like to add one more strategy to the list. Exam day mindset. Having the right frame of mind is key to being successful on the exam. If you have followed your exam preparation plan, you are ready. 
You have the knowledge and skills you need to pass this exam. All you need now is to keep your mind calm and focused on executing what you know how to do. Here are a few things to remember. To help you get into the right mindset for the exam, start by minimizing distractions the week before the exam. Trim your schedule to the bare minimum of activities and obligations. Do things that bring you calm. Know exactly where your exam site is and how to get there. I suggest actually going to the location a few days before exam day to confirm your route. Do not try to learn anything new in the last few days before the exam. You are ready. Get a good night's sleep the night before the exam. If the exam is out of town, consider getting a hotel close to the exam site. On exam day, you are in control. Take a deep breath with a clear mind and calm spirit and stick to your plan. Work easy problems first. Let go of difficult problems. Don't get stuck. Take time to work the problems you know how to work. Work steadily until time is up. The combination of your exam preparation, your exam day plan, and a good mindset will get you there. I invite you to learn more about our mechanical PE exam reviews at our website, drtomsclassroom.com. We're ready to help you on your journey to becoming a professional engineer, and we'd love to hear how this video has helped you. You'll find lots more videos on my YouTube channel, including sample lessons from our reviews and videos on fundamental mechanical engineering topics. If you'd like to see more videos like this as they become available, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to hear more from Dr. Tom's Classroom, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Thank you for watching. As always, it has been a pleasure.